Hi guys, uh, Coach Carter here. So the next video we're making is on body weight exercise movements. Okay, this is you know something we utilize daily in our weightlifting program here at Cerritos High School. It, it can work well with young kids, old kids. You can change the variations pretty easily. There are progression videos for push-ups, pull-ups, and lunges if your kids are having problems with those you know basic movements. Which especially with pull-ups, they probably will at first. But once they get to a high level of strength, then you can just start incorporate, incorporating them daily into your workout. So there's quite a few here, so we're going to get right into it. So why do we do bioweight exercise? To develop functional strength, right? We want to teach kids how to move their body effectively. So I was told this at school, in elementary or middle school, but I couldn't do a regular pull-up. And one of the aides at school said, well, what if you're hanging off a cliff and you can't pull yourself up? You know, you're going to be a goner. And I thought about that and I said, wow, that's not good. So the, the theme of that is we want our kids to be able to move their bodies effectively. And I think we get sometimes caught up in getting bigger and getting stronger. We don't take a step back. Well, can my kid do push-ups effectively? And going back to those progression videos, you know, most of our strongest linemen, when I really get them in like a push-up position, their, their form won't be super good when we first start. So we want to develop that functional strength to give us a good foundation to build up from. Bodyweight exercises also strengthen the core. So, I mean, our weightlifting exercises themselves, so front squat, you know, utilizing the clean, will develop the core. But if we're talking about specifically focusing on core movements, we're going to go high reps for the most part. We might use a light load, but we're generally, you know, going to use four exercises that we're going to go over in a second by themselves to just strengthen the core. Again, you know, the center of our body, all our movement, you know, kind of works through our core and then goes outward. So we want to, you know, really make sure we have a good foundation in the core moving forward for our athletes. Another thing I like to do with these exercises is use them at the end of a weightlifting session. So I call it an extra fun period. You can call it mental toughness time. You can call it overtime, but essentially it's a five to 10 minute period after your kids are doing the major lifts to get some burnout going. So they're, they're doing a, a bunch of push-ups, a bunch of sit up a bunch of uh, lunges, et cetera, to get those muscles really firing. I like to do it as a group to kind of end the session as a team. We might do some chants together. We might call out the numbers together, but I find it a very effective and efficient way to end your workout sessions, both for the team aspect and for the actual muscle burnout effect. And then the fourth reason these exercises are pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion is if you have a big group or maybe a group that's not super engaged like a PE class, Utilizing these exercises, A, will get your kids stronger, but B, I find that they are pretty engaging. So especially the partner exercises that we're going to go over at the bottom, they're in red. Kids really like those because they're working with a friend. It's a little different. And I I was really excited to see these work in my PE classes and, and excited to see how much more fun kids had when they were working out with a partner. So uh, let's get into the videos. Okay, so the first one is just a basic push-up. The videos kind of got bigger on me, so let me minimize them here. But again, there are, there's a whole push-up video, but the, the major cues I'm focusing on are wrist under shoulders and then back flat. Then we want to have our chest hit the ground, so nothing too spectacular here. We'll do a lot of regular push-ups, really just developing that upper body and that upper posterior. We can do diamond. Again, this is a little more difficult, a little more tricep work. We want to get the chest on the ground. And I like to utilize, like we call these Superman push-ups, but... When you bring one hand up, what's happening is the athlete has to, you know, stabilize himself on one arm, but they also have to go into full extension. So if you get a lot of kids doing these quarter push-ups, when they're forced to tap or raise a hand, it's going to force them to go all the way up. So doing 10 of these will be a lot harder than doing 10 regular push-ups. So I think this is a good variation to throw in with your, you know, more advanced athletes. So again, you know, push-ups pretty pretty common occurrence especially at the high school level right we're trying to develop lean muscle you know get that good foundation established it was, it was Herschel Walker I think I saw a video on him I don't think I did, I did see a video on him talking about how he's a push-up sit-up fiend if you've ever seen this guy he's in his 50s now and just rock solid and he swears to this day he just does a bunch of push-ups and sit-ups so we know these lifts are effective in building muscle we've you know progressed into more weightlifting exercises but at their foundation, at their base, these movements can still develop, you know, strength and flexibility and stabilize those muscles in your athlete. So moving into, you know, a second pretty common body weight movement is a pull-up. 
So again, this will be a little harder for your young athletes to do effectively, but I'll show you pull up, which is when your hands are facing away uh, from your body. So again, we want to go all the way up, all the way down. You know, strength, we usually get there with the progression exercises, but you want to get the chin up, want to go all the way down. Pretty standard. And for chin up, we want to, you know, have now our hands facing our body. So that's kind of a common, you know, thing we'll see kids do on their own. But we, we focus more on pull-ups because we feel it, it strengthens the lats and shoulders a little bit more. When we do chin, we find that it works a little bit more the bicep, which is okay. But in our program, we'll do a lot more pull-ups than chin-ups, but we will do both. So I want to, want to just give you a video of what both would look like. Again, the only main difference is the way our hands are facing. So pretty simple stuff. So now we're going to get into the ab exercises. So our first, you know, pretty common ab exercise we'll do is a toe touch. So to start, we want our legs up. Okay. We don't want them like our legs so far up that our, our butt comes off the ground, but we want them, you know, up, not perfectly 90, but slightly in that, like, I don't know, 100, 110 degree angle. And all we're doing is reaching and touching. So we want the upper back to come off the ground. We don't want to see our legs come into the hands. We want our hands to go out to the legs. Uh, you know, again, a couple common errors you'll see is kids bringing their legs to them, which you don't want. And you don't want the kids to rock, right? You want them to be stable on their butt, reaching and touching. You want to, that you, they'll, you know, they'll obviously definitely feel this in their abs. Some kids can put their legs perfectly straight out. Some can't. You know, I wouldn't overcoach that. I would just make sure the kids are up. Make sure the kids have their legs up and out away from them. Okay. So, again, some literature I read. Years ago, said that when the feet are flat on the ground and you're crunching upwards, you put a lot of stress on your low back because it's kind of arched. So for most of our ab exercises, our legs will be up because you'll feel your back flat, which is supposed to put less stress in that region. You know, a lot of lumbar spine issues can happen. We do do have one exercise where our feet are up with a partner. Young kids can usually handle this pretty well, but generally, if if you're a little older, you might want to focus on having your legs up when you're doing any of these crunch, crunch exercises for the stress that it takes off the low back. Okay, number two is leg pull-ins. So this is more of a traditional crunch. The only difference is, is we're bringing our legs into our body as we crunch up. So the, for the video, we want to be touching the feet at the top. So we're kind of meet, meeting right in the midsection there. So legs are coming in, upper body's coming up and we're meeting right in that middle. So, you know, when you're crunching, you're working primarily those upper, you know, four ab muscles. But when you're bringing your legs into your body, that's when you're gonna work those bottom abs, which are usually underdeveloped. So this is kind of combining both into one. Again, some common things you'll see is kids, you know, don't touch their feet at the top. They'll just bring their legs in without coming up. You want them to do an up and in at the same time, up and in at the same time. And let me, Quickly show you the video again, just nice fluid motion. Again, we want kids to have control as they're going up and going down. Okay, exercise number three. So we call this bicycles. You know, Russians is kind of another common phrase I've heard it called. So with most of the ab exercises, we will use without weight. All the ones you see here, you can pretty much do with light weight. Usually if you wanted to hold a plate in front of you, or for this one, you wanted to go side to side with it. But generally, we'll do high reps, so 20, 30, 40, 50 reps with no weight. So for bicycles, big cue is you want the kids balancing on their butt cheek. So what a lot of kids will commonly do is they'll lay flat on their back, right, which isn't going to be utilizing, uh, isn't going to be activating that core as effectively. And you also want them to have their feet off the ground. So that, I tell them, they're literally balancing on their butt cheeks as they're doing this. So they're pretty much twisting opposite elbow, opposite leg opposite elbow, opposite leg. So if I'm going right elbow to left knee, okay, that, that right leg is gonna be extended for balance. And you know, it's gonna take them a few, you know, a few days reps to get this, you know, efficient, but most kids can handle this pretty effectively. They will feel it, especially when they're balanced on their butt cheeks, they will feel a good burn. So this is one, this is one that I like to end the weight room session with because I can change how we count. So if I say, okay, you know, Don's, we're counting every four. Okay, so we'll all go together and I'll go one, two, three, and they'll all sound off four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'll change it up. I'll go count every two, count every five, count every seven. And just a way that we kind of end the workout together. Okay. Last ab exercise, I call it mountain climbers. Again, pretty common movement. So you're going to start in the upright push up position. I'm a little bit up. Ideally, your back's a little flatter, but essentially you're bringing your feet through your hips. So I'll show the video here and you're, and you're going at a quick pace. So my cue for this one is move the feet quick, right? You don't want to see kids laboring up and down. You want them to move their feet quick. You're bringing your feet into your body. So you're going to be working a lot of your stabilizers and then you're working those lower abs. So I don't do it for a ton of reps here, but this one is definitely a high rep movement. You can do anywhere between 30 to, I've done 100 sometimes in one set with kids. Again, this is kind of working quick twitch muscles, but also utilizing those abs and shoulder stabilizers. So it's another real common one we'll do. Okay, so now transitioning into partner exercises. So again, as I mentioned with PE classes, partner exercises are great, gets more engagement. I also like doing partner exercises with my older kids to mix it up, just gets them in a different position and, and working with a partner it's weird. I mean, high school age kids, they work with their friend. They just like lose their mind. So they have a lot of fun with it. So first one is partner, partner sit-ups. So I'm in quarantine, so I don't have a partner, but I do have a chair. So imagine the chair is my partner now. So for this one, your, your feet are touching. So toe to toe, you're reaching up and touching at the top. So in the video here, reaching and touching. Again, I have the kids clap. Um, imagine the chair going, you know, down and up with me. And when you're clapping at the top, again, it's weird. Kids clap. They start laughing and having fun. So you're, you're utilizing, you're working your abs while also having some partner engagement, which is going to increase your activity in the class. Okay, this is another really good one. This is definitely more challenging. Probably one of the more challenging ab exercises we do. So... You're really going to be in this position on the ground holding your partner's legs. So imagine my partner is standing up and he's facing my body on the ground. So essentially what's happening is he's pushing my legs down and I'm not letting them hit the ground. So the two big cues for the person on the ground is one, they keep their legs as straight as possible. Two is they don't let their feet hit the ground. Okay, so for the video here, I'm coming up. My partner's pushing my legs down if my partner was standing over me. So again... Weakness in the abs, you'll see this pretty efficiently because one, the legs will go all the way down. The athlete will not have the strength to hold their legs up. The second big thing you'll see is they don't go down very low. Okay, because once you get from like 135 to 180, that's when those abs are really going to be straining. So you'll see those errors with kids with weaker cores. As the kids get stronger, they'll be able to do this more efficiently. And you can go from side to side a little bit. Make sure the partner that's standing gives them a good push. And it, this will be one you definitely feel if you're doing anywhere between 10 to 20 reps. Your kids will be feeling it. Okay, moving on here, we have partner push-ups. Okay, so now we're going into a push-up exercise. Again, very, very efficient. Something the kids really enjoy. They, they face each other, so head-to-head -head with a little space. They're going down and then clapping at the top. Down clap down clap so two things are happening one they're doing a regular push-up but when they hold themselves up and clap they have to go into full extension and they have to stabilize that opposite hand so it's effective and obviously the theme with all these partner exercises when they're clapping they they get you know they just have fun it's weird so that's something that is pretty effective okay this next exercise I call it resistance push-ups okay there's two ways to do this the first way is to have a plate and the partner that's standing, I'll, I'll let's just say it's partner one in this example, is guiding the plate. So his main goal is to make sure the plate stays on partner two's back. So you'll see here in the video, my chair was not able to hold it for me. It, the, the plate's gonna slide right there. So the partner that's standing, partner one, is trying to make sure that plate doesn't move or slide off partner two's back. So you're essentially getting a push-up exercise with more weight Again, a little more load, you know, over, progressive overload, challenging the muscles to lift more weight, okay? The second way you can do this if you don't have weights is partner one can give pressure as partner two comes up. So let's say partner two is coming up, partner one gives pressure down, and he acts as the weight. So 
A couple cues with that is partner one who's pushing down wants to let partner two come up. You just want to give them a little pressure, right? Like roughly 25 pounds of force. And then the, and the partner doing the push-up should be able to come up and down fluidly. So again, just a different way to get some more muscles uh, worked, a little more stress in the push-up position. And again, you're using a partner, which makes it a little more engaging. Okay, and the final partner exercise is partner split squat jumps. So now this is a little bit more of a ballistic dynamic movement. So my chair was very ineffective at helping me in this one, but you're going to face your partner and hold a hand and split your legs. And imagine you're sinking, you're jumping, and in midair, you're switching feet and grabbing your partner's opposite hand. So you'll get an idea of here in the video, sinking, jumping, switching, sinking, jumping, switching. So you can see my hands. Imagine I'm grabbing my partner's hand as I'm jumping and you're switching in midair. So midair, you're going to switch and jump. So my hands are switching and my feet are switching. So the big common cue with this is you want to make sure the kids are still jumping up. What you'll see them do is just try to go really, really quick. And the goal of the exercise is to get them jumping up. So again, something that they enjoy, but we're still getting an actual athletic movement worked where we're working on our, our split jumps and our unilateral strength. So, all right, again, you guys that are, are working with kids all the time, you know, there's a lot more exercises you can do. There's tons of ab exercises, tons of, you know, you can do bounds, you can do leap, you can do froggers, you can do bear crawls. I mean, rolls. These are the ones that I like to focus on, but we do use more obviously when certain times call for it. So how do we program it? You know, again, for you know, pull-ups and chin-ups, we're usually in the 10-ish, 20-ish rep range. Abs, 20, 30-ish rep range for most of them. So we, we, we usually utilize high reps, you know, body weight as the load. Uh, I love the burnout effect, as I mentioned, after a weightlifting session. I think it brings camaraderie to your team, and I definitely think, I definitely see the growth when they're all done with the workout. Again, if you don't have a weight room or weight, what are you going to do to get your kids stronger? Bodyweight exercise circuit is the way to go. With COVID and, and quarantine, this is obviously what a lot of our kids have had to rely on. And then if you have a P class, I think it's a great way to get A, your kids stronger, but B, get them engaged, especially with those partner exercises. So I think there's a lot here to pull from. Uh, you guys definitely get creative with different exercises that you feel like are uh, that you can utilize. I would just caution, you know, you want to make sure they're they're efficient and they're easy for the kids to accomplish, right? You don't want to do a bunch of exercise that your kids can't handle. But I think the ones that I've gone over are ones that most your kids will be able to accomplish right away, if not within a first month of weight training. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching.